Hello everyone, my name is Graham Dudgeon and welcome to part 9 in a series of tutorials on three-phase power. The aim of the video series is to build up our engineering knowledge on the design, analysis and operation of three-phase electrical power systems. Today, I will discuss group control. I'll begin by showing all the elements of a closed-loop synchronous generation system. Voltage is controlled by an automatic voltage regulator, which adjusts field voltage, and frequency is controlled by a speed governor, which adjusts mechanical torque. For more information or a refresher on how synchronous generators operate, please refer to part eight in this series. Before we dive into droop control, I'll first set some context by discussing constant frequency and constant voltage control. Note that constant frequency control is also referred to as isochronous control. Isochronous control means a generator unit will regulate frequency to a given set point regardless of the active power output of the generator. Constant voltage control means a generator unit will regulate terminal voltage to a given set point regardless of the reactive power output of the generator. The speed governor is responsible for regulating frequency and an error signal that measures the difference between the desired frequency set point and the measured frequency is used to adjust fuel flow. The speed governor is designed specifically to reduce the frequency error signal to be as close to zero as possible. The automatic voltage regulator, or AVR, is responsible for regulating terminal voltage and an error signal that measures the difference between the desired terminal voltage set point and the measured terminal voltage is used to adjust field voltage. The AVR is designed specifically to reduce the voltage error signal to be as close to zero as possible. Here I'm showing the result of two simulations. In the simulation on the left, I ramp up active power from zero to a nominal value of one per unit. In the simulation on the right, I ramp up reactive power from zero to a nominal value of one per unit. Note that in order to maintain a constant frequency, that the speed governor increases mechanical torque, and in order to maintain a constant voltage, that the AVR increases field voltage. Note that field voltage has a value of one per unit when there is no reactive power demand and increases to beyond two per unit as reactive power increases. These results seem to suggest we have effective generator control. We have the means to regulate both voltage and frequency to constant values, which seems appropriate for effective system operation. However, there is a catch, and that catch exposes itself when we have more than one generator connected in a system. To explore the response of a two generator system under different active and reactive power loading conditions, I'm using a simulation model where I've connected two generators in parallel and have a single active power load and a single reactive power load. Here we can see the rotor speed response when we increase the rotor speed set point on generator one from one per unit to 1.01 per unit. We've created a conflicting control request. Generator 1 is trying to move to 1.01 per unit, while generator 2 is trying to stay at 1 per unit. Because the two generators are directly connected, their rotor speeds are trying to stay equal, hence the conflict. Notice that the rotor speeds of the two generators are fighting against each other, as evident from the equal and opposite oscillation. The situation gets worse when we look at the generator active powers. Generator 1 has increased the full active power in its attempt to increase system frequency, and Generator 2 has decreased to zero active power, and in fact is seen to regenerate power in the oscillatory region, in its attempt to decrease system frequency. This control configuration is clearly undesirable. The situation is similar for constant voltage control. Here we can see the voltage response when we increase the voltage set point on Generator 1 from 1 per unit. 1.01 per unit. The set points are shown as dashed lines. As with isochronous control, we've created a conflicting control request. Generator 1 is trying to move to 1.01 per unit, while generator 2 is trying to stay at 1 per unit. Because the two generators are directly connected, their voltages are overlaid in this case. On the plot on the left, you can see that generator 1 field voltage saturates at 2.5 per unit in this case, in its attempt to increase voltage. Generator 2 field voltage decreases 
in order to decrease voltage. On the right, we see that generator 1's reactive power increases and generator 2's reactive power decreases and goes negative. Therefore, generator 1 increases inductive reactive power and generator 2 responds by ultimately generating capacitive reactive power. As with isochronous control, this control architecture is not appropriate for effective system operation when we have two or more generators. Group control is a simple and elegant fix to this problem. So what do we mean by droop control? Let's consider a single generator to describe the basic concept. With frequency droop, we add an auxiliary feedback signal that multiplies active power measurement by a frequency droop value and subtracts that from the frequency reference to form a drooped frequency reference. The drooped frequency reference is then compared with the frequency measurement and the speed governor will bring the frequency to the drooped frequency reference value. The figure I'm showing here shows the response of frequency to active power loading when we have a frequency droop value of 0.05 or 5%. The droop curve is shown in red and the dashed lines indicate frequency and active power loading on a per unit or normalized basis. As we've set the droop value to 0.05, the frequency drops from 1 per unit to 0.95 per unit as we load the generator from 0 active power to 1 per unit active power. With voltage droop, we add an auxiliary feedback signal that multiplies reactive power measurement by a voltage droop value and subtract that from the voltage reference to form a drooped voltage reference. The drooped voltage reference is then compared with the voltage measurement and the automatic voltage regulator will bring the voltage to the drooped voltage reference value. The figure I'm showing here shows the response of voltage to reactive power loading when we have a voltage droop value of 0.01 or 1%. The droop curve is shown in red and the dashed lines indicate voltage and reactive power loading on a per unit basis. As we've set the droop value to 0.01, the voltage drops from one per unit to 0.99 per unit as we load the generator from zero reactive power to one per unit reactive power. So this is all very well. We've introduced droop control for both frequency and voltage, but how does a simple modification solve the stability issues we saw with isochronous and constant voltage control? To answer that, let's look at the response of two generators that are operating under droop control. Here we consider two generators under frequency droop control. In this case, I've set the frequency droop values to be different. I've set droop two to be half the value of droop one. Droop one is set to 5% and droop two is set to 2.5%. The red line is the droop one curve and the blue line is the droop two curve. So we ramp up the total system active power load from zero to 0.9 per unit. What we can see is that the frequency is the same for both generators as expected, but the different frequency droop curves means that the active power output of each generator is different. Generator 2, G2, is providing twice the active power of generator 1, G1. With our final loading condition of 0.9 per unit, G2 is supplying 0.6 per unit and G1 is providing 0.3 per unit. System frequency, is 0.985 per unit. The difference between droop control and isochronous control is that we are directly controlling active power when we have droop, as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between frequency and active power output for a given generator. This is why droop control provides a stable response, a simple yet elegant solution to the stability problems we saw with isochronous control. Notice that half the droop provides twice the active power. This is a fundamental observation of droop control. One final point, if both droop one and droop two were equal, then both G1 and G2 would provide equal active power. Here we consider two generators under voltage droop control. As with the frequency droop example, I've set the voltage droop values to be different. I've set droop two to be half the value of droop one. Group 1 is set to 1% and group 2 is set to 0.5%. The red line is the group 1 curve 
and the blue line is the group two curve. Total loading is 0.9 per unit. What we can see is that the voltage is the same for both generators as expected. But the different voltage droop curves means that the reactive power output of each generator is different. G2 is providing twice the reactive power of G1. System frequency is 0.9975 per unit. The difference between voltage droop control and constant voltage control is that we're directly controlling reactive power when we have droop, as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between voltage and reactive power output for a given generator. Notice that as with frequency droop, half the voltage droop provides twice the reactive power. And if both droop 1 and droop 2 were equal, then G1 and G2 would provide equal reactive power. In summary, constant frequency or isochronous control means a generator unit will regulate frequency to a given set point regardless of the active power output of the generator. Constant voltage control means a generator unit will regulate terminal voltage to a given set point, regardless of the reactive power output of the generator. For two or more generators connected in a system, isochronous control and constant voltage control can lead to instability. With frequency droop, we directly control active power, as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between frequency and active power output for a given generator. With voltage droop, we directly control reactive power, as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between voltage and reactive power output for a given generator. A fundamental observation of droop control for two generators is that half the droop value means twice the power. If droop values are equal, then generators provide equal power. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for listening.